How you doing, everybody? I finally got the chance to see Knives Out. And this is, of course, the latest film from director Rian Johnson, and it stars many, many very talented people. One of those people is Christopher Plummer, who plays mystery writer Harlan Thromby, which is such a good name for an author. Harlan has passed away shortly after his 85th birthday from an apparent suicide. Or was it? Detective Benoit Blanc, played by Daniel Craig, has been called in to investigate while the various members of Thromby's family fight over the will and many, many other things. And although several of them stood to gain a sizable chunk of Thromby's estate, I'm sure they had nothing to do with his untimely demise. Or did they? And caught in the middle of it all is Thromby's live-in nurse, Marta, played by Ana de Armas, who seems to be the only truly innocent party in all of this. Or is she? This is a classic whodunit, in case I didn't already make that clear, and it is a serious contender for my favorite movie of the year. I know the year is not yet over, and there's still at least one more huge movie that I am looking forward to. I'll give you a hint, it's not Cats. But I'm thinking it's gonna be hard to dethrone this one because this was really good. This was so much fun, such a well-written mystery. The twists are very well done. And yes, I said twists, there are multiple. Just when you think you have it all figured out, the movie throws another wrench in the works and another and another, and it just keeps doing it. And it does an excellent job of planting just enough seeds. So by the time you do get to the big reveal at the end, you won't see it coming, but when you look back, you realize, oh yeah, that actually does make perfect sense. We have a stellar cast comprising this huge family of children, grandchildren, and in-laws, all of whom spend a great deal of time arguing with each other because this is largely a family of assholes. And I do have to wonder how Harlan ended up with a family like this, as he appears to have been a genuinely good man. I guess the apples fell pretty far from the tree there. Some of them are a bit left-leaning, some are a bit right-leaning, which of course leads to several arguments, mainly about immigration. And as you can imagine, for Marta, who is an immigrant herself and has an undocumented mother, this makes things incredibly awkward. Probably safe to say Diarmas is the least known actor in the movie, or at least one of the least known, and she is so very good in this and very funny. Uh, her character has an interesting trait that prevents her from lying, which I'm not going to give away just in case anyone's watching this that hasn't seen it, but oh, it's so good. One of my favorites is Joni, played by Toni Collette, who is kind of the hippie flower child of the family, and she is just the right amount of annoying, just enough to be entertaining without going too far and just becoming grating. Jaden Martell plays young Jacob Thromby, who is pretty much the polar opposite. His own sister describes him as an alt-right troll, and he's just the kind of kid you want to slap. You wouldn't, because that's child abuse and that's wrong, but you want to. And then you have people like Richard, who's played by Don Johnson, who is one of the politely racist types. They claim they love Marta, they love having her around, she's like part of the family, and they can't even be bothered to remember what country she comes from. Jamie Lee Curtis plays his wife Linda, who is also Harlan Thromby's oldest child, and you really have to wonder what she saw in this douchebag, because she seems to be the only member of this dysfunctional family whose shit is in a state that even remotely resembles together. And then, of course, you have their son, Ransom, who is played by Chris Evans. And he's not really a racist. He hates everyone equally. And, man, he is so good at it. It's amazing, after all these years of playing Captain America, it's nice to get a reminder that, yes, in fact, this guy does have range, and, in fact, he can play the villain. And the big star of this movie is Daniel Craig as Detective Benoit Blanc. And his performance in this movie is... It, it's a lot. He is foghorn leghorning the shit out of this, and oh, it is delightful. For some people, it's probably going to be too much, and I get it. I, I totally understand if that's how you felt about this, but for me, I, I just loved it. I had about as much fun watching him in this movie as he clearly had making this movie, and I believe Johnson has considered making more Benoit Blanc movies if Knives Out does well enough at the box office, and God, I hope that happens. Really, my only complaint about this cast is there are so many amazing people in it, it's hard to give everyone their chance to shine, and whoever your favorite is may get shortchanged a bit, and unfortunately, you just kind of have to go with it because 
with a cast with this much talent, there's really no way around that. And the last shot in this movie, oh, that is one of the best last shots I have ever seen. That is how you stick the landing. Well done, Johnson. Like I said, if this does not end up being my number one of 2019, it will at least be near the top. It was fantastic. I highly recommend it. If you have not yet seen it, and you only see one movie over the holidays, well, then it's probably going to be Star Wars. I mean, who are we kidding? But if you see two movies, then the second one should definitely be Knives Out. And the next time I see you, I will probably be talking about Star Wars. So until then, take care.